at your presentation. Good evening, everyone. Today I am going to um, present a very interesting as well as very important topic, awake pruning. Uh, now I'm going to stop uh, switch off the video and uh, start uh, sharing my slides. Large animal studies demonstrated clear lung protective effects of prone positioning. For many years, pruning uh, was only utilized as rescue therapy for severe hypoxemia. However, pruning is awake, non intubated patients gained acceptance since the onset of COVID 19 pandemic. Why this popularity is gained? To overcome the shortage of ventilators to decrease the overwhelming burden on increased uh, intensive care beds. Invasive ventilation was associated with poor outcomes to delay in invasive ventilation. It is now globally accepted therapy to improve oxygenation in acute hypoxemic respiratory failure in COVID-19 patient and as well as non-COVID ARDS patients. Indication for implementing prone ventilations, mainly patients with ARDS need to improve oxygenation and to reduce mortality. COVID-19 acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is called CARDS. Proning has been widely studied mainly in intubated ARDS patients and has shown improvement in oxygenation and reduced mortality in patients on invasive ventilation. With increasing clinical experience, of treating COVID-19 patients, self-proning of conscious, awake, non-intubated patients with COVID ARDS has shown profound improvement in oxygenation, leading to delay and even avoiding intubations and invasive mechanical ventilations altogether. What are the causes of hypoxemia in COVID in COVID in coronavirus infections? It is postulated that Hypoxemia in COVID-19 is resultant of a VQ mismatch due to vascular pathology, especially in early stages. Loss of hypoxic pulmonary vasoregulations in also contributing to this process. As per study, the lungs in the early phase referred to as L-type or type 1, low elastance, low recruitability, low VQ ratio, CT scan shows ground glass appearance, subpleurally, and uh, along the fissures due to increased stress and strain in these areas from increasing respiratory drive leading to high work for breathing. Physiological benefits with proning. Patients in supine positions have compromised pulmonary function due to atelectasis of the dorsal alveoli, overinflation of ventral alveoli due to increased respiratory drive, ventilation perfusion mismatch. From these figures, we can um, easily describe the what, what are actually uh, happening in prone and as well as the supine position with the lung frills. <laughs> this schematic representation, uh, the figure A is the schematic representation of the lung in supine position. In supine position, there is more collapse alveoli posteriorly and over distension of the ventral alveoli, but Perfusion is more in the dependent part. So, more collapsed alveoli is more, uh, perfused, uh, uh, perfused more. That is, VQ mismatch is occurring more. But from uh, uh, the figure B, we can see uh, uh, throughout the lung, the alveoli and the perfusion of the lung is uh, homogeneously distributed. This is called the 
recruitment of the lung. What are the proposed mechanism explaining oxygenation in aeroprony? This is the recruitment of the lung. Uh, as I already described this procedure, in prone position, there is less over distension in non-dependent lung regions and less cyclical airspace opening and closing in dependent region, which is the putative causes of ventilator uh, induced lung injury. Recruitment also improves compliance and decreases the shunt. Secondly, more uniform distribution of the tidal volume and end expiratory lung volume thus reducing the cyclical opening and closing of the lung which reduces the atelectasis. Decreased lung deformations, increasing homogeneity, a less compressed lung in the prone increased ventilations. Dorsal lung, dorsal lung regions have higher density of blood vessels. Pronic improves ventilation in these non-dependent lung fields, improving VQ matching. Increase perfusion toward the anterior alveoli, improved VQ ratio. As the anterior chest wall is facing bed surface, compliance of the chest wall is reduced and it decreases regional lung stress contraction of the muscular diaphragm exerts, exerts a more distribution of stress. Better secretion drainage and increase PO2 by FiO2 ratio. Next come the protocol for avectronum. If SpO2 more than 94% on room air and respiratory rate is less than 22 per minute, close monitoring of the patient, educate and encourage proning. If SpO2 less than 94% on room air, respiratory rate more than 22 per minute, but patient conscious, alert and self-communicative and able to change position independently, educate and explain proning, allay anxiety by assurance or using anxiolytics, Use pillows at pressure points. And if it's a SpO2 less than 94% on room air and respiratory rate more than 22 per minute and patient has altered mentation due to hypoxemia and airway is unprotected, intubation followed by invasive ventilations is indicated. If there is no altered mentations, and protected airway, but SpO2 is 94, less than 94% on room air, and respiratory rate is more than 22 per minute. Uh, assess for proning, use anxiolytics or mild sedation, followed by close monitoring. In any condition, oxygen or uh, oxygenations of non-intubated patients is worsening. What to breathing is increasing, or patient is hemodynamically unstable, or having arrhythmia, go for intubations and invasive ventilations. Whom can we avoid prone? Conscious, cooperative, alert patient who can self communicate, able to adjust their own position with minimal assistance. How to do avoid proning? Explain the procedure to the patient and its benefit. Emphasize to maintain the position at least for 30 minutes to 2 hours. If the patient is unable to prone completely, then take lateral or semi-prone position. If patient is anxious, low doses of anxiolytic may be considered to improve tolerance. A close watch for respiratory depression should be kept. Care during aeroproning, continue monitoring of vitals, mainly SpO2 uh, SPO saturation, respiratory rate, heart rate, blood pressure. Frequency of monitoring every 15 minutes for first 30 minutes, then every 30 minutes till on prone position. Vigilant monitoring to detect early signs of deteriorations. Can call bell should be available. Patients with a protruding abdomen will need special mattress. Use of multiple pillows to create a hollow in the middle of the uh, inpatient abdomen may be tried. Supplementation O2 can be done with nasal prongs or face mask or NRBM or high flow nasal oxygen or BiPAP. Contraindication to avoid proning. Patient in need of immediate intubations, compromised airway, respiratory exhaustions, uncooperative patients, altered mentations, hemodynamic instability, patient having arrhythmia, unstable spine, 
pelvic instability, chest trauma, recent abdominal surgery, pregnancy, mainly second and third trimester. How long to allow air pruning? A single session of a prone position should be maintained for at least 120 minutes for an effective improvement in oxygenation. It is advisable to do frequent proning to an average of 5 to 6 hours per day. When to interrupt? Avoid cell, pro uh, cell proning should be continued till the patient is comfortable. Patient has recovered or SpO2 more than 96% on room air. Patient has no respiratory distress, desaturations on exertion. In a sick patient, proning should be interrupted. If there is increased work of breathing, use of accessory muscles of respiration, failure of improvement in oxygenation with proning or further desaturations, hemodynamic instability and arrhythmia. An improvement in SpO2 on awake proning should not be an assurance of improvement in the disease condition. Vigilance should be kept for signs of respiratory distress or increased work of breathing. The decision to intubate and invasively ventilate is based on clinical assessment. Delaying intubations just due to improvement in oxygenation can lead to catastrophic outcomes. These are some few important points to be remembered. Also, we have to know what is the normal properties of the lung? Alveoli try to collapse and chest wall tries to expand. Negative pleural pressure balances these two opposite forces and thus the alveoli remains open. Due to consolidations, collapsed alveoli or pulmonary edema, more negative pressure is required to open this alveoli and maintains ventilations. Thus, it increases work of breathing. According to waterfall model, Lung fields can be divided into three zones from above to below zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. Middle zone that is the zone 2, ventilation is proportional to the perfusion. Here VQ should be 1 but practically it is, doesn't happen as there is mixing of venous blood with the arterial blood that is venous blood of the division vein directly drains into the left atrium. This is called the physiological shunt. So VQ in zone 2 can't be 1, it is uh, uh, approximately 0.7 to 0.8. In zone 3, perfusion is more than the ventilation, so more dead space uh, areas are present. Normally lungs tries to make all fields to be zone 2 to reduce the VQ mass mismatch and it makes lung more homogeneous. In hypoxic patients, step up is done by using nasal prongs to face marks to NRBM to hyplo nasal cannula to pipe up. As re requirement of the O2 is increasing. Our goal is to cut off this requirement of low flow oxygen to high flow oxygen. In Procefa trials, it sh shows whether patient is on awake proning or proning with uh, in intubated Mostly, uh, mortality decreases more than 30% due to improvement of oxygenation and better lung ventilations. Now, uh, what are the take-home messages? Avid proning causes recruitment of lung alveoli and improve oxygenation. Avid cell proning has been shown to improve oxygenation in COVID-19 patients. Avid proning may not successfully prevent all intubations, but is a zero cost tool to use with minimal complications. Effects on mortality are yet to be studied. It appears promising careful and frequent mortality of patient frequently high oxygen flows is recommended. Whether avid proning will help in non-COVID ARDS is yet to be studied, but there are so many trials is going on, but it may be a potential low-cost therapeutic option in an acute hypoxic respiratory failure of all causes. Thank you.